KCAA, Loma Linda, 1050 AM, the station that leaves no listener behind. Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of The Real Men of Real Estate, hosted by me, Thomas F. Chappelle, Jr., uh, host of the Black Inland Empire Real Estate Investment Club, the I3 Social Club, as well as a lot of different other things as well. We're here on another Sunday afternoon with one of my very special guests. I, t I say that every time I get on the radio, every guest is a special guest to me. Uh, gentleman is on, on Zoom with me. He's... Uh, in Texas, uh, I believe is Houston, if I'm, not, if I'm correct. Uh, him and I met a couple of months ago at a different real estate investment club, and ever since then we've been, you know, kind of tight as thieves on the on the phone talking and, and collaborating and doing different things like that. And I do appreciate him taking the time out to be a guest on this show. So, uh, Kenneth, I want you to pronounce your last name because I'm not going to chew that up. So if you could do that for me, I really appreciate it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, my name is Kenneth Chakura, and uh, as he stated, I am from Houston, Texas. Now, how did you gain, get with a name Chakura? Is that, uh, what type of name is that? Oh, that's actually Igbo. Um, it's based out of Nigeria, okay. Southeast Nigeria. Yeah. Okay, I was about to say Ebonics, but you said Igbo. <laughs> <laughs> So now uh, the way I pronounce it may be. <laughs> <laughs> so tell the folks about yourself. Who are you and uh, what are you about? Definitely. Um, my name's is Kerr. Once again, I'm new to real estate. I've actually joined real estate in February. But uh, as far as what I've been doing before that, I was uh, I'm in IT, been in IT for 15 plus years. Also, I also served as a uh, a liaison in a sense of selling commodities based commodity goods based in um in africa in particular wow. and moving and getting those commodity goods to the united states such as raw diamonds mangoes you know different tropical fruits that are specialty to that uh to that uh geographic so you got some region. diamonds for me then right <laughs> hey if you if you got some buyers i got some diamonds <laughs> raw diamonds uh, hey what, what I, we have, I have the specs. It's all about what you need. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, take it that you are from Nigeria. How long you been in the states? Oh, I'm actually from uh, the states. My father is from Nigeria. My mother's from Louisiana. Oh, okay. Oh, got a little mixture yeah. going on then. Okay. Exactly. They met in college. <laughs> you know, if you if you meet a Nigerian from like the '80s, there's a good chance he's uh, married to an American woman, and that uh, he's been here know as long as anybody else <laughs> okay okay so um where did you grow up at i actually grew up in this small town called winder georgia uh i was from atlanta lived there until i was eight but i uh, moved to winder and i've been claiming it ever since okay i you know you know i used to live in atlanta i was all over i lived in atlanta decatur they call it the deck i also yep. lived in uh, uh forest park uh, lithonia uh conyers oh yeah i lived all over you know uh I left there. Matter of fact, my number is still four zero four. So that's the best part. About I see it. it on the phone when you call me. I'm like, yeah, you, you see that? My number seven seven zero. So exactly, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So um, let's let's get into it. And uh, wanted to uh, get the audience to know you a little bit better, and a little bit about your background, uh, uh, your education wise, and things like that before we go into the uh, real estate side. Definitely. Um... Well, as far as education is concerned, I actually uh, started out, once I graduated high school, I went to Columbus State University. Um, I initially played basketball for a couple of years, but uh, decided uh, I wasn't going to make it to the pros, so <laughs> the amount of effort I was putting in just wasn't worth it. <laughs> and uh, I ended up getting a, a degree in business management. From there, I started working at a bank, and um, it, was, it basically like a, it was a loan company of sorts. And after six months, I was like, you know what? This business thing in regards to banking is not for me. So I went back to school again. I actually went back for uh, for web for uh, for web specialist. And while uh, while doing that, that's kind of how I got involved in IT. And uh, so from 2010 all the way till, um, no, from 2009 all the way to now, I've been in IT ever since. And I also have another degree in cybersecurity. So uh, uh, I have a lot of specialties in, in IT in particular. Okay, so uh, 
web designing, uh, when you talk about web designing, are you talking about, excuse me, designing somebody's website and maintaining that? Or what does that consist of? It consists of a multitude of things. Uh, initially, what they teach you is is a formulation of design, how to design websites. But for the most part, they teach you kind of how to maintain a website, how to be a web administrator. Um, basically, you know, how to run someone's site uh, from, from the front end to the back end. But as far as, you know, they, they basically try to give you like pure skills so you can go out into the world and make money. But to be frankly honest with you, I wasn't great at that. I ended up finding out what my niche was while being in IT. Oh, because I was going to ask you, hey, I got a website I need you to help me with. <laughs> Man, I, 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 can, I got people. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, moving on from that, um, the question is, is after you find out what your niche is, then what you end up doing? Uh, once I found out, uh, once they actually brought me in, I actually joined in um, it, it for District Governor. Rest his soul, he passed away maybe 10 years ago. Um, I ended up getting to this opportunity in Virginia, moved to Virginia, D.C. area, and this opportunity was with ABI, and I started as an internet uh, specialist, or a, as we all call an IT web editor. And from there, I ended up maneuvering to, you know, being a webmaster, and then I found my niche. And my niche was basically leading teams, uh, selling products, selling uh, applications or, you know, the value applications to different uh, stakeholders. And, you know, just being someone that was, uh, you know, tremendous in terms of training, networking, communicating, just, you know, just someone with very good soft skills. Okay. So you're in Virginia, then you leave Virginia, then uh, how did you end up in the, in the Houston? I'll tell you this. The long story short, I ended up, uh, I ended up getting a call. And I was, at, uh, I was at my job at IMF, and they called me and said, hey, uh, hey, this is this is Exxon Mobil, and I was like, well, this is a it was a contractor. This is a contract there. We're hiring for Exxon Mobil. I'm like, okay, that's fine. And then they said, uh, well, we have opportunity to follow for for an engagement manager. I'm like, oh, that sounds great. What's the minimum they're willing to pay? Oh, they're willing to pay like 140,000. Oh, 140,000. You know, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that was about 80,000 more than I was, make, I was making at that time, and they ended up hiring me. Oh, okay, okay. So and that's kind of how I came to Houston. You packed up the family and you came on to Houston. Oh yeah, you know, no, no, no one in my family was missing that opportunity. Uh, <laughs> my wife's my wife's already a doctor and a lawyer, so it was like at that point it was like Whoa. you know, it was finally us, yeah, combining so that. You income. can't mess up because she can take you for everything you have, huh? <laughs> at this point, she's making a little bit more, so I don't know if it, it might be vice versa at this point. <laughs> so you end up going through that. You end up moving to Houston and whatnot, and you fell in love with. Being in Houston, uh, I hope you're not a Rocket fan. Oh, I am not. A, I'm okay. Atlanta all day. You, okay. You can see from shirt. I, I, I got you. <laughs> Even though I'm not an Atlanta fan, I live there. But uh, um, let's let's move a little further. Okay. What got you to want to do real estate? It's funny. Uh, I was just having uh dreams about it. Simple. I mean, I've I've been asking God to give me send me. Send me something. Send me, what do you feel my next steps are? Like, where do you feel, you know, where is the path you want me to go into to be the best version of myself? Because I've been in corporate America now. I've, you know, climbed the corporate ladder. I've, you know, been that that individual who had to figure out, okay, as an African-American, this is how I'm maneuvering this, in, this space. And I have maneuvered and got to a level where I'm being well-respected by my peers. What was next? And you know, I just kept getting like real estate signs, but uh, it was weird because it was like it was a specific type of real estate. But uh, one day I ended up seeing a commercial on YouTube. It was a uh, for multifamily. I went to the event and I was like, yeah, this is it right there. And so all the visions God was giving me, it just led to that moment. Now, let me do this. Most people in America are still looking to find who they are, okay? Mm -hmm. And most people in America says, okay, this is my niche and this is where I'm directed to go, whether it's a spiritual thing or not. Now, a person at your position making the type of money that you're making, why would you even want to change to something that is unfamiliar? You know what I'm saying? Something that uh, is, is much harder to do when you're on your own, 
versus um, getting a, a corporate check. What what what? How do someone figure this to be? Hey, this is the direction I want to go into. I want you to elaborate on that. It's internal. It's all internal. Um, it's that drive within you to be the best version of yourself that you're, you know, I, I was brought here for the purpose. And that purpose is not only to serve God, but to serve, you know, whatever vision that God gives me to go to. And uh, it just got to the point where it was like, this is great what you're doing, but I want to give you more. So do it like this. Talk to the hearts of all the people out there in radio and television land that's listening to your voice right now. And, they on that they on that teeter totter where they either making the kind of money you make it or a little bit more, or making tremendously less or somewhere in between. And now at the age that they are, whatever age they is, they're thinking about okay, I need something more. And how was it? A, as far as the decision, was that an easy or, or a uncomfortable decision to make? And if it is uncomfortable, how did you be able to convince yourself to even go that route? That's a great question. A change is not comfortable, first and foremost. Uh, how it came to the decision was a very, it was an easy decision to make on the fly, but it was a very difficult decision to execute in, in, strat in, in you know, realistically. Um, I, I had to learn from my mistakes of other businesses I've owned. I've owned quite a few businesses, and uh, for the most part, they have flopped. I mean, the only business that haven't flopped is really the uh, the commodities business. But other than that, all of them have flopped. And the biggest reason why is because I was stubborn. I didn't listen. I didn't I didn't heed advice from those like Thomas. I didn't heed advice from those who I've who've mentored or who who people who mentor me like Thomas have introduced me to. And so. Uh, what I did was I just said, you know what, I'm just going to shut my mouth and listen. Okay, I want you to do me a favor. I want you to speak about the the flop side because he, he, here's where the rubber meets the road with a lot of people because I've been there. Mm -hmm. One, we are, I, and I tell, you, I tell people, I hate using the word afraid. I hate using hope, failure, try, and afraid because those words kill you. They really do. People don't understand the value of what the tongue can do. The tongue can either speak life into you or it can speak death into you. And depending on where you want to go in your life, you have to be that kind of a person. So you've done a lot of different things. And as you say, um, a lot of them wasn't successful in your mind. But I'm going to tell you, in, in my mind, they were successful. Because when you go through situations like that, it's got to make you stronger to be able to accomplish the next thing. So ask yourself when I say this is that how do you pick yourself up after, okay, this didn't work out the way I expected. That didn't work out the way I expected. And knowing that you have a family that you're taking care of, how do you get yourself to do the next thing in spite of what's been going on? Explain Definitely. that. Definitely. Uh, the reason why I did a lot of those things is because of family. Um, first time I started my uh, one of the businesses started because my daughter was going to be was coming. The second time I did it was because uh, I had another son in the way, so I had uh, three kids. So each time it was a financial reason of I wanted to you know put my family in a better situation. But each time I was hasty, I didn't I didn't talk this over. I didn't I didn't look into all the options I had. You know, we all have the S uh, the SD. LC or you know whatever your small business I think it's I think it's like SB small business association that's right. in our local town we all have that available to talk to to set up appointments with uh, we all have abilities to reach out to people who are doing what we're trying to do in the industry and do that the, those times I did it I just jumped out in there and said you know I just jumped out and and you know head first and said I'm going to give this everything I have and of course. It was without details. It wasn't. It wasn't a lot of strategic planning. There was no business plan into it. It was a. Uh, it was just pretty much me jumping headfirst because I had a, a reason, and my reason was for my kids, right? I had. A, I was having a daughter, and then I was having another son. So, uh, the the best way I can truly describe those uh, the best opportunities for you, if you're going to take that leap into the next that that goal that you have, which is either real estate or whatever it is, 
there's a lot of assets available to you that you can talk to on a day to day basis. There's credit advisors, there's tax, there's, there's, there's uh, CPAs, there's, there's mentors in your field. If you, all you have to do is go to like meet up and you'll see people who are doing what you're trying to do in your field, meet up with them, find out what they're doing. What you might find out is there might be some, it might be a better field that you need to be into that you just got exposed to that you didn't know about before you joined that you maybe need to be a part of this instead of what you're doing, or maybe do both. And so a, a big part of it is learning experience. I learn from my mistakes, but in reality, you know, I'm, I'm a lot, I'm doing this for a better reason. I'm doing this for me. I am not doing this because of another person. Okay. Now I know you and I have several conversations and, uh, I, I, and I challenge you because I was challenged because I'm in my fifth, I'm 57 now, you know, I'm about to say my, I'm in my 50s, but yeah, I'm 57 now. And coming from my background, like I tell everybody my story, once upon a time I was ashamed of it, but I'm no longer ashamed of it. No, I did not finish high school, you know, and I was ashamed of it back then and come to understand that I'm glad that I didn't finish high school. Now, most people might say I'm crazy, but the fact of the matter is, is that being programmed and that's the way I'm looking at it because we're programmed to go to school, get good grades, go to college, get us a good job with benefits, but not go to school, get good grades, go to college and start your own business. We come to find out that a lot of our mentors like the, the, uh, um, uh, what's his name? The Apple guy. I can't think of his name right now. Steve jobs, Steve jobs, you know, he didn't finish, you know, and those guys became very successful and, like right now, I'm in the process of writing a book about 50 gurus of, of real estate and how they were able to accomplish the things that they accomplished um, as far as uh, whether they went to school or didn't go to school and different things like that. So um, it's, it's, it's a challenging thing. And my thing is now I got to the point to where I like teaching and I like challenging folks and whatnot. Uh, I'm going to stop here. We're going to take our first commercial break. And then when we come back, we're going to continue to elaborate on this side, and then we'll go even further. Thank you for listening to The Real Men of Real Estate, hosted by me, Thomas F. Chappelle, Jr. We'll be back with our special guest. Thank you. This is Steve Matley. Join me every Thursday at 3 p.m. right here on KCAA for Building Solid Foundations Radio Talk Show. I spent decades as a professional construction manager, business owner, real estate developer, and a college educator, and I enjoy learning new things from other people. We talk a lot about real estate, business, and finance, but we cover a diverse range of other topics as well. Some of the topics we've discussed in the past few months include real estate investing, leadership, higher education, ADUs, Marketing using technology, multifamily rental properties, business strategy, entrepreneurship. You never know who may show up or what they may talk about. So join us right here on KCAA for Building Solid Foundations Radio. Hey guys, it's Damon, Mr. Foxy, Damon Hart, and I'm here with the Real Men of Real Estate. And I just want to say, hey, come and watch us this Sunday, 1 p.m., live, every Sunday. Okay, we're going to be on KCAA Radio. 1050 AM, 106.5 FM. If you got a minute, just tune in. We can't wait to have you here. I'm going to be there. If you can't make it on there, we're going to be at Roku TV, Amazon Fire TV, or Android app on Building Solid Foundations channel. So tune in. But you know what you got to do in the meantime. Keep it fast. Fire Up Connect is the most innovative business networking group. Supporting and collaborating with a dozen of small businesses that are interested in building and establishing strong business connections. Hosting educational live seminars while carrying out business and community driven projects, as well as marketing programs as a part of its membership program. FireUp Connect also offers virtual assistance with a wide range of services including, inbound customer support, chat support, appointment setting and email management, graphic designing video editing, web design and development social media marketing, e-commerce solution, content writing, and much more. For more information, head on over to www.fireupconnect.com. Fire Up Connect, helping success stories unfold every day.
Welcome back to The Real Men of Real Estate, hosted by me, Thomas F. Chappelle Jr., the host of the Black Inland Empire Real Estate Investment Club, which is every third Wednesday of the month on Zoom at this point, uh, starting from uh, West Coast at 6 p.m. to 9, East Coast is, is 9 to midnight. Um, here with my special guest, Kenneth, and we was in conversation to talking about um, how do people uh, – really know what their niche is and whatnot. And like I said, you and I have had had several different conversations and whatnot. And what I come to find out, especially from a person like me, is that, you know, we're not privy to a lot of information that is out there, you know, self-help and different things like that. So when it comes to wanting to do a business, structure a business, make it successful, we're not sure that we have the right criteria to follow through you know, now we know that, you know, the government gives you about three years to do a business and screw it up. And, you know, the first year you don't really have nothing to compare it to. Second year, you know whether or not you're going to do well in your third year. Third year, you decide whether or not you're going to continue the business or just belly it up and things like that. So without um, uh, knowing some of the things that you knew, you know what I'm saying, you thinking that the things that you know now would have helped you become successful then, or you think that um, it wouldn't have mattered? Uh, this is a difficult question because uh, my, my background is a little bit different. I came from a family where my father started his business in 1989. Okay. Which is not much uh, longer than before I was born. I was born in 86. And He's been very successful as a businessman. A number of businesses across uh, the state of Georgia, very successful, had over 200 plus employees in 1994. And I worked with him a lot as far as, you know, just helping out the business when he, you know, came moved, like local to Winder. And I, I actually helped him locally at the business. So when I started a business, I was like, I'm going to be like my father. <laughs> well, I wasn't quite like my father. <laughs> and uh, and what I realized, my strengths and his strengths were just completely different. Um, and that's a big thing that a lot of people have to understand is what may work for somebody else might not quite work for you. So what you kind of really have to figure out is, okay, where is my, where, what's my parallel? What's my role in this? And that actually took that's different for me. Like my dad, he doesn't have to ask a bunch of, he doesn't have to have like mentors and stuff like that. He just sometimes just, he gets into it and then just, you know, figures it out along the way. I can't do that because I won't ever figure it out. I have to be able to reach out to people who have done it before, you know, ask questions. Okay. See, okay. This is how you've done it. And then see, okay, that, that method works for me, but I'm going to, you know, I'm going to eventually find what method works for me. And uh, eventually I'm going to, you know, just like you shared the wealth with me, I'm going to share the wealth with the next person. So everyone has a different purpose into getting there. And so for me, I don't necessarily know, if, you know, if, if what I knew now help, would have helped me back then, because I think I kind of knew it back then. It's just that I figured out what worked for me now that I didn't quite know back then. Well, the way I look at it is the fact is, is that there's different seasons and, um, the generations in those seasons were totally different than the generations of our my season and seasons be, um, behind me and whatnot. And now that we live in a tech world, you know what I'm saying? Uh, everything is being done by AI. AI then took over everything. You know, back then, internet was, wasn't even uh, a part of our world. You know, less known uh, cell phones, they weren't even part of our world, computers. You know, in my generation was just getting started and you didn't have a home computer. It was corporations that had these computers and whatnot. And then as time went on, those couldn't afford them, got computers and those couldn't. They had to go to the library, things like that. So the way I see it now, everything evolves. And the one thing I've learned about when it comes to doing a business is that you're finding someone that's older than you and smarter than you. Because they've been there, they've done it, they wore their T-shirt. Now, a lot of stuff that they did back then, it's not going to fit in the model of today. But you can utilize different components and then strengthen it with what's going on today in order to make it strive. And that's one of the biggest things that I do when I teach is that <clears throat> you got to understand, you got to bridge the gap 
between the old and the new. Because without the old, you can't have the new. It's just like saying old school, new school. You got you to gotta respect and you got to sh- love what came from before you to where you're going after the fact. And that's where a lot of people differ because they don't respect the old. They, oh, that's old. You know, they don't work anymore. No, it still works. You know, now you got to tweak it and make it a little bit better than what was going on because what your father did and what people that I've seen coming up, everybody just say, okay, let's go out and do it. And then they had help. Today, we don't act, we, we tend not to ask for help. Oh, we got it. We know it. And because we, we swear up and down, we're more educated. And that's one of the biggest things. Education, yeah, education is a good thing. I'm not knocking education, you know. But you also, it, it, you're not a, it, it takes a village. You understand what I'm saying? There's no I in team, you know, so you can't do it by yourself. And a lot of us do want to do a lot of things by ourselves. So here's the thing, coming up to um, where we are now. Now, like I said, you and I met a couple of months ago at a real estate club. Now, my question is, what made you decide to go to that particular club or just go to any club? and get the information and the club that you went to, did it help or were you still searching? It definitely helped 100%. Uh, number one, I found you, I think in the second meeting. So it definitely helped. And the, even the people I met during the club, I they, they still keep in touch with me. So it definitely helped. I would say uh, the reason why I did that is because of my, my strategic goals. My strategic goal was, what was okay? I, I created three reasons why I wanted to get into the industry beyond, you know, just for myself for the betterment of, you know, passing it down to others. Is I really wanted to build a network of of, of great real estate minds that could all contact that could all connect to one. Like basically, who's that one person that? Hey, let me contact Ken, and Ken could tell me, okay, this person in New York who's doing this, or you know, Ken could tell me this person that's in San Paul, Minnesota, that's doing this. And so just kind of having that large network and that it is very much kind of similar to kind of my previous background, which goes to the commodities. I had to have a large network, global network. I had to have people that was based in Africa, I had to have people based in Dubai, I had to have people based in, in Europe. So I had people based all over the United States, Canada, and I had to really make sure that network was pieced together because you never know. It, all it takes is one deal to really to strike. And even if it's not a deal, for the most part, just sometimes network networking, communicating, we kind of all have an idea what we're trying to do. It, it creates an opportunity in time. So for me, it was all about the idea of just networking and building what my primary goal was, was to be that 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 global interact in a, a intermediary. Very similar to what you do, Thomas. I mean, what you are doing already is kind of it's just like that. But, uh, I mean, I'm obviously following your path, obviously. <laughs> I'll pay you later for all that, okay? <laughs> now, I want to step back just one further. Uh, here's the thing that's, that's I know a lot of people are going to wrestle with. Now, you saying at this moment you're making anywhere between, let's say, one and a half to 200K annually on your corporate job, Okay. Now, I know a lot of people are going to question, why would he want to walk away from something like that? You know what I'm saying? And get into something else that doesn't pertain that kind of money on a regular basis. You know, because when you're talking about doing real estate, it's more like commission-based, if you will. It's not a salary versus commission or just a salary or anything like that. It's whenever the deal comes through. And a lot of times you might be at the threshold, but then the deal can go south. So I want you to kind of elaborate the difference between the corporate side of the money and the real estate side of the money, because you can build a nest egg with the real, with the corporate side of the money that you have now. So I know you and I spoken about building a nest egg on the real estate side. So kind of elaborate on that for me real quick. Definitely. Well, the, the real estate side is still fairly new, so I don't, I can't really speak too much into that. And I, I'm not leaving my corporate job. Just, uh, just to to tell you guys the truth, I'm I'm not leaving it. I'm not planning on leaving it. And when I do, it's because the real estate side has just completely taken off, and I don't have to be at the corporate job anymore. But uh, as far as corporate nest egg, I mean, it's very straightforward. A corporate nest egg is because automatically they give you a 401k. 
um, depending on what company you work for, they might match it. For my company, they match it up to like 14, 15%. Of course, some companies give bonuses. Some companies give pensions. I have, my company actually has a pensions. So a lot of things, you know, there's a lot of benefits to being in a, a specific company, especially some of these, ma you know, conglomerate, major conglomerate, international conglomerate companies that are like massive. It's some real benefits to being there as a, for, as a worker. I mean, I've talked to many people that have retired at these jobs. You know, they've done, you know, there's plenty of people I talked to at, the company I'm with now, that after 25 years, they're uh, they're looking at their pension, seeing okay, what year is what year? How does this year look? And if they see like okay, this is a good year, they, they're out. They they're not they're not willing to risk losing 200 300 thousand, especially if they they uh, have maybe 3.5 or 4 million dollars. And so, for the most part, everyone's very you know when you're in a corporate world, when you're in the corporate world, especially you know when you get to the level I've gotten to. There's plenty, there's a, there's a big way you can kind of create that nest egg to, to really support yourself. I mean, especially if you read a book, uh, cause I was reading the book today, uh, the richest man in Babylon and the big thing <laughs> it talks to, the big thing it talks about is the ability to save that money, save your money, save your coins. And so you definitely want to save, you know, 10%, you want to definitely, you know, you know, cause that, that is ultimately the, 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 the cancer for all of us. I mean, even me for as much as I made, because I lived in DC, I, ha I ended up getting myself into debt to survive DC. And I haven't quite fully recovered yet, but um, we all come through those those obstacles. And so that's kind of how I dealt with that nest egg. As far as real estate, I'm going to be honest with you, Thomas, I'm going to lean on you for that one because I, I haven't created that yet. <laughs> all right. So we're going to stop right there and take our next break and we're going to come back more. and We're going to elaborate a little bit more on uh, Mr. Kenneth here and talk about further things. Thank you for listening to The Real Men of Real Estate, hosted by me, Thomas F. Chappelle, Jr. We'll be right back. This is Steve Matley. Join me every Thursday at 3 p.m. right here on KCAA for Building Solid Foundations Radio Talk Show. I spent decades as a professional construction manager, business owner, real estate developer, and a college educator, and I enjoy learning new things from other people. We talk a lot about real estate, business, and finance, but we cover a diverse range of other topics as well. Some of the topics we've discussed in the past few months include real estate investing, leadership, higher education, EDUs, marketing using technology, multifamily rental property, business strategy, entrepreneurship. You never know who may show up or what they may talk about. So join us right here on KCAA for Building Solid Foundations Radio. Hey guys, it's Damon, Mr. Foxy, Damon Hart, and I'm here with the Real Men of Real Estate. And I just want to say, hey, come and watch us this Sunday, 1 p.m., live, every Sunday, okay? We're going to be on KCAA Radio, 1050 a.m., 106.5 f.m., if you got a minute, just tune in. We can't wait to have you here. I'm going to be there. If you can't make it on there, we're going to be at Roku TV, Amazon Fire TV, or Android app on Building Solid Foundations channel. So tune in. But you know what you got to do in the meantime. Keep it fast. Fire Up Connect is the most innovative business networking group. Supporting and collaborating with a dozen of small businesses that are interested in building and establishing strong business connections. Hosting educational live seminars while carrying out business and community driven projects, as well as marketing programs as a part of its membership program. FireUp Connect also offers virtual assistance with a wide range of services including, inbound customer support, chat support, appointment setting and email management, graphic designing video editing, web design and development social media marketing, e-commerce solution, content writing, and much more. For more information, head on over to www.fireupconnect.com. Fire Up Connect, helping success stories unfold every day. Welcome back to The Real Men of Real Estate, hosted by me, Thomas F. Chappelle, Jr., the host of the Black Inland Empire Real Estate Investment Club. Um, talking to my guest, Kenneth, now, before we went to commercial break, we was talking about the difference between corporate financing and uh, real estate financing, and you did bring up the uh, Richest Man of Babylon book. Now, I, I just got to ask you, who told you about the book? 
It was you. You told me. <laughs> you said you would talk to me unless I read the book. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm not going to ask you anything else until we finish talking about it, then we can talk. But here's the thing. A lot of people want to do real estate, and they're not sure exactly where they want to go. And a lot of people want to fire their corporate jobs because they are very unhappy in their corporate jobs. And they figure, well, I get into real estate and it's just going to make me even much happier. And they come to a realization there's a shock because you're not guaranteed a paycheck every week or every biweekly. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, you just can't come in here and quit your job and thinking you're going to get rich quick based off of one deal because it's dependent on how the deal is structured. And the one thing is, is that that's why I brought that up as far as the monies that you're making on the corporate side versus the real estate side. We do have some people that come in here and want to do a part time and then they get upset because it's not working to the best of their abilities and whatnot. So they want to, they want to go ahead and venture on it on a full time basis. I'm liking it. I'm liking the things that you're doing and the way you're doing it because the fact of the matter is there's layers to doing real estate, you know, and it's layers to doing anything. It's just not real estate. There's layers to it. And, and in other words, you have to accomplish that goal before you can move from one layer to the next. And the thing of it is, is that you're doing it the right way by talking to people, getting under people, mentoring and things like that, because people come and ask questions all the time, but the one thing they don't do is follow through, you know? And that's the real reason why I wanted you to read the real man of real, I mean, the richest man of real estate. I mean, the richest man of Babylon. Because there's a layer to it, and the guy kept asking the same question, and the teacher or the in, the mentor told him the same answer. But in that book, he kept cutting corners, and he didn't get it until finally it took him a minute to get it. And that's what a lot of people are doing because they want to put the cart before the horse. And and doing it the way you're doing it is is a, is a tremendous success because now you're starting to slow down. That's why I say what I say to you. And yes, I do get in your behind just like I get into everybody else's behind, you know. But here's the question I'm going to ask you. And I ask everybody the same question. If you had an opportunity to talk to your younger self, what would you have told your younger self? Honestly, I would have told my younger self to listen to my younger self when uh, I was around great people. Okay. There were some people in my life when I was younger that were phenomenal. I mean, they, they were similar to you, Thomas. They would they were doing successful things. They were telling me exactly what I need to do to become, you know, to, to maintain that level of success, even at that time at 21, 22. And I just kind of listened and, like, you know, took notes. They're like, oh, really? That's great. And they kept moving. That was a mistake. I should have taken, I should have took that information and ran with it, or at least started to build on that. And uh, I would probably say it sent me back about 10 years. I eventually caught up to where I need to be, but um, it was a, it was a big time mistake. And if I would have just listened to my younger self, now I don't, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't take people that are, you know, about what they're about business i don't take that lightly when i'm around you i everything you say or whomever i take it very seriously oh you did take it wrong a couple of times because i told you to contact a couple of people and you did not you did not so don't tell america (laughs) don't tell the world that you're doing it right now i had to let everybody know now here's the thing i'm gonna say this to you in all honesty it's not a mistake the thing is is that You have to be in a position to be ready to receive. You know, I tell people, I say, you know, we talk about uh, the Bible says he will open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you have not room enough to receive. And the reason why I say that a lot is because people don't really understand that parable. And I say, just imagine if you're standing in the middle of a room and the blessings are coming down. If you don't make room, the blessing is going to swell you and consume you and kill you. You have to make room. You can't sell it. And that's the problem. Everyone wants to sell everything. You have to give a lot of stuff away, you know, because everybody's not going to meet your demand. 
everybody's not going to come to you with your price. They're always going to want a discount. They're going to want to hook up. They're going to want all these different things. So in other words, you have to regroup and get ready for what's coming. Because if you don't, it don't matter if you listen back then or if you're listening now, the fact remains you still won't get it. And that's the point of the richest man in Babylon. You've been taught everything that you have is not, to me, it's not one thing a person needs to pray for because you already equipped with everything you have. You just have to be at the right time and at the right place. And the biggest thing, like I tell people, you have to leave a blueprint because somebody going to come behind you, whether it's your family members or friends, and go pick up where you left off at. Just like MLK said, I didn't see the promised land, but I might not get there with you. So the fact remains is that people got to understand that there is no wrong way or right way. It's when you are ready to, like they say, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. And that's a true statement. You know what I'm saying? You can be ready. You can not be ready. And the teacher's always there. But when you're ready, the teacher will appear. And that's when you can say, okay, now I can move side or I'm ready or whatever the case may be. It's the fact that you have to point in your life. And if you're not ready, you don't get to make it the next day. At least you left a blueprint that somebody can come behind you and finish what you left off at. And that's why I am very hard and very serious because it took me a long time to get to where I'm at, you know. It took me a very, very long time. And the one thing that my mentors have said about me is that I show up every day and I'm engaged. Whether I know it or whether I don't know it, I'm engaged because I'm showing up because I got nothing else. Got nothing else. This is all I have, you know. So either I'm going to make it or break it. So in in that, I say, I I thank you for all the opportunities that, you know, God has stowed upon you and that you're listening to the to to the message at the moment in your life to better your life, you know, and I really appreciate that. So all that that I'm saying to you is tell me before we get out of here, what have you learned? Not by me, but just in general that people could understand and take away from this, that they know that they can go ahead and accomplish their goals. Live with no fear. And even though this is going to be the hardest thing for you to do, because this is the hardest thing for me, it's okay to be stubborn, but you must acknowledge you're st being stubborn. I've been stubborn plenty of times. There's been times even with Thomas, he would tell me something and I would be like, no, I want to do it this way. And then I would have to acknowledge it several weeks later when I had to humbly <laughs> bow down and be like, you know what? You're right. I was wrong. <laughs> we must under We must drop fear. And we must, if we, it's okay, we're going to be stubborn occasionally. It's just our human nature. But you must be able to sit, just sit in the mirror and say, you know what, I was wrong. I'm going to, you know, I, I, I've been, I acknowledge I'm wrong here. And uh, honestly, humility is going to be critical for whatever you're doing in life. It's going to be critical. Uh, everyone I met in this industry that's having success are, so, are, so, are very humble, believe it or not. They're extremely humble, they have tremendous humility. I mean, they they'll they'll call they'll answer your call on Sunday at 6 p.m. I mean, it was Mother's Day. They they one of them took my call on Mother's Day. This is everyone here is 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 about once once people have made it, they have made it because they've received it. So now they're giving it, they're passing it forward. So you must pass it forward. So the most important things that you really need to take away is drop fear. If you're uh, if you're stubborn, acknowledge it and 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 move and, and move on and, and learn from it. And then the third thing is you must pass whatever you learn forward to the next person. And ultimately that fear is going to, when you conquer that fear, that's really the biggest thing. It's, it's that pro, I call it procrastination. I call it sometimes fear. But when you, when you actually conquer that, that's when you really be able to, you're able to get to the next level. Because at that point, what are you scared of? That's true. That's why I say when you get out the programming side of it, because there's no fear in programming. There's no fear in anything that you can do because you can achieve all your goals. Just imagine, just like I said, you know, uh, they told me I'm dyslexic. 
but I wrote a book. Now, I didn't write the book. I got a ghostwriter to write the book. Now I'm on my verge of writing my second book. So now AI is doing it for me, okay? We all using AI now. So it's like I'm going to use everything, every piece of tool they're going to give me, I'm going to use it. But I use it to the best of my ability. And the point of it is is that when you get out of that, that's what, that's what the program is all about because we were taught to do this, 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 and this, and this way, that way, and this way. And if you don't, you don't have the right criteria. You don't have everything that you need. So guess what? You're a failure, and you're not. So we're going to take our last commercial break, and we're going to come back and wrap it up with our guest, Kenneth, on The Real Men of Real Estate, hosted by me, Thomas F. Chappelle, Jr., of the Black Inland Empire Real Estate Investment Club. Have a great evening. This is Steve Matley. Join me every Thursday at 3 p.m. right here on KCAA for Building Solid Foundations Radio Talk Show. I spent decades as a professional construction manager, business owner, real estate developer, and a college educator, and I enjoy learning new things from other people. We talk a lot about real estate, business, and finance, but we cover a diverse range of other topics as well. Some of the topics we've discussed in the past few months include real estate investing, leadership, higher education, ADUs, Marketing using technology, multifamily rental property, business strategy, entrepreneurship. You never know who may show up or what they may talk about. So join us right here on KCAA for Building Solid Foundations Radio. Hey guys, it's Damon, Mr. Foxy, Damon Hart, and I'm here with the Real Men of Real Estate. And I just want to say, hey, come and watch us this Sunday, 1 p.m., live, every Sunday. Okay, we're going to be on KCAA Radio. 1050 AM, 106.5 FM. If you got a minute, just tune in. We can't wait to have you here. I'm gonna be there. If you can't make it on there, we're gonna be at Roku TV, Amazon Fire TV, or Android app on Building Solid Foundations channel. So tune in. But you know what you gotta do in the meantime. Keep it fast. Fire Up Connect is the most innovative business networking group supporting and collaborating with a dozen of small businesses that are interested in building and establishing strong business connections, hosting educational live seminars while carrying out business and community-driven projects, as well as marketing programs as a part of its membership program. FireUp Connect also offers virtual assistance with a wide range of services including inbound customer support, chat support, appointment setting and email management, graphic designing video editing, web design and development, social media marketing, e-commerce solution, content writing and much more. For more information, head on over to www.fireupconnect.com. Fire Up Connect, helping success stories unfold every day. Welcome back to The Real Men of Real Estate, hosted by me, Thomas F. Chappelle, Jr., of the Black Inland Empire Real Estate Investment Club as well as the I3 Social Club. We're coming into the home stretch at the moment and um, we're going to uh, finish our conversation with our guest, uh, Kenneth, out of Houston, Texas. Uh, the man is a, a scholar and a, uh, a telepathist and all that other stuff, you know. Uh, He's a world traveler. He's been around the world. <laughs> you know I'm hyping you up. And you have never been in the military, but you've been around the world. Um, any parting words you want to give our guests before we get out of here? Definitely. Uh, I, something I didn't mention that really changed, also really helped shape kind of, you know, this thought process as well as me and my wife, we went to a wedding in the south of France. And then we went to this place called Monaco. And seeing how people are living, we're like, wait, people are living like this? And they're human beings just like us? No, we got to have this. <laughs> we got to have so, this. So you we are a world traveler then, okay? Yeah, so I wasn't so that, wrong. <laughs> that really changed my perspective, honestly. I, believe it or not, traveling would change your perspective. And I went when I went to Monaco, it just completely blew my mind. And so it really, I looked at the prices. I was like, we're going we're gonna to be able to afford this soon, sooner than later. I told my wife that. So uh, definitely, uh, that's something I also want to mention. <laughs> okay, okay. So any other parting words that you want to uh, uh, stow upon, I guess, because now since you've been on the radio and you worldwide right now, you're a connoisseur 
world traveler. People going to want to get in contact with you. They going to want to they going to want to touch the hem of your garment because they know they're going to be even more blessed. So part them with some words. Definitely. Um, you can reach out to me, guys, via uh, LinkedIn. Uh, my name is Kenneth Chakura, and that is K-E-N-N-E-T-H. Last name is C-H-U-K-W-U-R-A-H. Uh, also, uh, I think it's going to be posted on um, Thomas's site as well. I posted it in the chat, so Marie Ashley has it. Um, and one last thing before I go, I want to say, guys, you must have a strong foundation. And I want to I want to say thank you to my my parents, my wife, my children, my in-laws, because without them, none of this is possible without, uh, you know, making sure that, hey, I have everything in order at the house. Well, that's good. That's good. Um, also, um, with um, with the relationship that you and I have built thus far, and um, as far as many travels, we got to hurry and get you over here in the studio so that when we can clown a little bit more, you know, live and whatnot, because um, my next adventure is uh, doing a real estate television show. So not only do I have the real estate uh, investment club, the I3 social club, now I'm embarking on the real estate uh, radio show. Now I'm doing the television show, so I'm doing a lot. So need to have you on live in living color and you can bring the whole family and we can make a thing out of it. <laughs> Think like that, you know. Oh, but, definitely. Um, do me a favor once again. Go ahead and give your information in case somebody want to contact you. Phone number, email address, uh, whatever else uh, media's that you're on. Definitely. Once again, that is Kenneth Chakura. That is K E N N E T H. Last name C H U K W U R A H. My email address is Chakura. Period. Kenneth at gmail dot com. You can also reach me at LinkedIn. Um, my name on LinkedIn is Kenneth Chakura. K E N N E T H C H U K W U R A H. And my phone number is 770 519 8047. And if you have commodity, if you're looking to buy like raw diamonds and you know, you're, 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 you're one of those guys who, you know, you want to cut and of course make more profit, please reach out to me because we are interested. Obviously, you have to, you know, it's, it's a, you know, like if you have done any deals, you know, it's monthly, you have to actually have a, buy a certain amount of carrots. But if you're looking for that, please reach out to me because I have that as well. All right. Well, Kenneth, I thank you for joining the show. Thank you for being a part. I thank you for all your wisdom and your knowledge. And I thank you for just coming to me in short base on it when I called you. Uh, once again, my name is Thomas Chappelle, T-H-O-M-A-S-C-H-A-P-P-E-L-L. Junior, uh, you can contact me on all social media platforms, uh, YouTube's, uh, um, uh, Instagram, Facebook, uh, LinkedIn. Um, the Real Estate Investment Club is every third Wednesday of the month, Black Inland Empire Real Estate Investment Club, as well as um, uh, I3 Social Club. The book will be coming out real soon, The 50 Gurus of Real Estate, and um, I look forward to our next show. Uh, next month. Thank you guys very much and have a wonderful weekend.